That on was the funniest. Show. That was the funniest video ever. Which, I was crying. Like, I am so funny. The, the, <laughs> by the way, people, Geo had a bunch of verve before we started this show. I had nothing to do with it. I had three cups of coffee. Only three? All right, here we go. You had three cups of coffee and then a verve? Mm -hmm. Wow. Big guy. The verve's kicking in. Are we rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. On today's episode, to build a NAS server or not to build? That is the question. I'm Giovanni Gallucci. This sweet baby is John P. And this is Geek Beat. I'm going home. Today's episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Netflix. Thanks, Gio. Hey gang, a couple of days ago, Bob D sent in a really good question. So good, in fact, that I thought I'd turn the answer into an entire episode. Not because I think I've got all the answers, but because I know for a fact that some of you out there know a lot more than me about storage and media serving. So I'll take a swing at this one, and then both Bob and I would like to hear your thoughts. So here we go. Bob asked, I've decided to build my own NAS for a vi variety of reasons I won't bore you with. I want to build a server grade system, something that can hold up to around 20 drives. I'd like to rig the rig to be rack mountable. I was thinking of going with some type of server rack and then some type of server chassis uh, for you, I suppose. Any suggestions? And during some back and forth emails, I got this clarification. One of the reasons I chose to go this route as opposed to the pre-built NAS devices was because I like the flexibility of Windows Home Server. I use Windows Media Server coupled to the HD Home Run Prime to capture my cable signal and record it to a disk. Staying in the Windows platform allows me to continue, continue to do this. Well, Bob, you sound like the kind of guy who doesn't mind getting your hands dirty, and you know what I always say? Hack it like you stole it. Actually, I've never said that before, but yeah, I think I'm going to make... Heard, I'm gonna, never heard that. I'm gonna make a t-shirt out of it and sell it for 25 bucks. Anyway, let me tell you what I would do if I was gonna build my own storage server. I'm gonna narrow it down to two options. So let's get started with option A, the most bang for the buck. What you could do is head over to Newegg and get a Norco RPC 4020 20 bay hot swappable chassis for 300 bucks. Then you're gonna need a motherboard, CPU, RAM, network card, video card, and a whole host of other little gadgets. And when you're finished buying and piecing all those together, you better pray to the gods of lost data that you don't have any driver content contentions or buggy firmware. Because in fact, if you go this route, it's a crapshoot. And if we're talking about a storage server, personally, I wouldn't take that risk. On the other hand, there's a backup company called Backblaze, which has open sourced the development of its storage arrays they use. And over the years, they've gotten better and cheaper. If you do a search for open source Backblaze, you'll see a ton on it, including their recent design update to the Storage Pod 3. These designs are heavily vetted, and if you stick to their exact list, you can build something that you can be reasonably sure will work. Their pod can accommodate 45 drives for up to 180 gigabytes of storage in a 4U chassis. Now, there are companies that actually manufacture chassis to the Backblaze specs, like 45drives.com. So although I know you said you only need 20 discs, I honestly wouldn't build my own unless I was going the 45 drive Backblaze chassis route. And in that case, I wouldn't really build it. I'd buy it from 45 drives for about $5,000. Of course, the other thing about the Backblaze unit is that you'd need a full-size rack and probably 240 power for it. But hey, if you've got 5K for a chassis plus about 9K for drives to fill it, I'm going to assume you've got a giant rack. So let's talk about option B, the safest bang for the buck. The problem with option A is you're investing a lot of money in a big-ass chassis backed by no one. If you're a big company with a bunch of them, that's okay. But if you only have one you probably want it to be reliable. Also, if you don't need 45 drives, you're gonna waste a lot of space and power supporting that unit. And that turns your storage into a headache, which personally is the last thing I want. So I have to ask, why go through any of that pain? QNAP makes a 3U chassis that holds 16 drives and starts at just over 4K. The TS1679U-RP comes with a dual core i3 processor, two gig of RAM, and can be had with up to 10, up to four 10 gig E ports, plus four gig e-ports. If you decide you need more space, they sell expansion chassis that can scale it all the way to over 400 freaking terabytes. A 16 drive expansion unit costs 3K. 
By the way, QNAP isn't the only one to offer a rack mount chassis like this. Synology does too. And there's even a Lenovo that I really like. And they're all in the 4K ballpark. Plus, there's a newcomer from Theseus, I think it's pronounced, called the N8810U-G, which is a rack mount, eight drive unit for $2,000. It holds half the drives, but it's also half the price, and it's got a 10 gig E network card and an HDMI output. It won't scale to 20 drives, but you can always add more of these things later. Now these aren't gonna give you the density that a Backblaze unit does, but they will carry a good warranty and there's gonna be a major vendor backing your purchase with things like drivers and other updates for a long time. Oh, and they'll also fit in a smaller rack, like maybe a rolling rack, which I'll tell you about in a minute. By the way, I'm not just recommending these things to you, we're going through the exact same decision process. With our upcoming move to the new building, we'll have our own little data center, so we're about to step everything up a notch. Speaking of stepping things up a notch, if you don't yet have Netflix, you seriously need to go to netflix.com forward slash geekbeat and get a free month of service and step up your entertainment a notch. This is the time of the show when I tell you the latest stuff I've been watching and then you tweet at me and tell me what to watch next. First of all, Scott Cublin in the office over there got me addicted to an idiot abroad. It's about this British guy who goes around to see the seven wonders of the world the hard way. It's hilarious. Next up, I started watching House of Cards Season 2. Okay, I told you guys to prepare for Season 3 like a few episodes back. Sorry, it's only Season 2. But Kevin Spacey is still awesome. Plus, how do you know that I'm not really watching Season 3? I am John P. Finally, I watched a really bad movie called Cherry 2000 about a guy whose robotic love doll breaks. So he has to take a Mad Max style trek through the wastelands to try and get a part to revive her. And in the meantime, he finds good old fashioned apocalyptic love. Where do you get this crap? So if you don't have Netflix, go to netflix.com forward slash geekbeat, get your free month and binge on these shows until your eyeballs hurt. Now back to the episode. All this talk of shows and I haven't even addressed the Windows Media Center stuff yet. Well, that's because I'm not going to. Frankly, I think it's a fine way of managing your media. So is running Plex either on a server or on the NAS itself. And if you do that, you can then use a Roku or a smart TV like a Samsung to stream the media through the network. And yes, that is the way to go for this application. If you were to put one of these boxes, any of these boxes, next to a TV, it will be so loud and annoying, it will wreck your experience. They need to be buried somewhere out of the way, like in a closet. So rack them up somewhere and be done with it. Use a giggy switch and you can just map a permanent connection from your NAS to the PC or Mac, if that's what you want to use, connected to your TV, and then you're done. Okay, choosing your storage chassis is half of the equation, but once you do, you're gonna need a rack to mount it in. And I'm not the world's expert at rack technology, but I'll show you the three different types of racks that we have. First up, the one we're using in our closet over here, and the one I have at home is the Belkin Wall Mount Swing Away Relay Rack for 275 bucks. It securely mounts to the wall, you bolt in some shelves for the various stuff, stick your rack mount NAS in there, and bingo bango, you're done. By the way, if you're worried about heat in your closet, change the door on it to one of those that has louvers so there's some air circulation, it'll be fine. Next up, if you aren't needing a full 42U worth of rack space, I recommend this StarTech 22U mobile half rack. It'll run you a little over 750 bucks, and although our box arrived beat up, mostly the contents were okay, except for this one little latch that was broken. Anyway, somehow we never got it replaced, but it doesn't matter. Now, if you need the full 42U rack, well, I just purchased this trip light unit over here and we'll be deploying it soon in the new data center. Later on, when we get into installing all of the networking gear and the cabling throughout the building, I'll be happy to make some videos about everything we're doing if you guys are interested. But seriously, you need to tweet me to let me know because if no one is interested, I'm not gonna do it. Cause A, it might bore you and B, it's a lot of work and I'm lazy. Okay, that's it for this episode. I want to send a huge thanks out to our patrons. Thank you to all of you for helping fund all of this. If you have specific topics you want me to tackle, just email me or tweet me, and I'll see what I can do. 
Oh, and if you have additional suggestions for Bob about building a 20-bay NAS server, drop us a comment. Let us know your creative solutions. Ciao.